and we've got a model of a container ship hull. Incidentally, MaxSurf comes with hull models for many different types of vessels that are already built uh, with the proper techniques. Uh, the lines are fair, and these are models for vessels like catamarans, workboats, planing hulls, displacement hulls, trawlers, tugs, sailing yachts, um, quite an extensive library of hull models uh, and these serve as good starting points for using Max Surf. In the modeler, uh, a very uh, powerful capability that's included even with the entry level uh, Max Surf product is the ability to uh, size surfaces. So you can scale the vessel um, up or down in uh, one of three different directions, length, beam, or depth. You can also proportionalize uh, the increase as well. So it keeps the proportions the same. But today we're going to do something a little bit more advanced with parametric transformation. Uh, before I do that, I want to show you how easy it is to do certain things like for example if you wanted to modify the bulb on this vessel uh, with NURB surfaces it's as easy as grabbing the right control points and that's I'm actually modifying the bulb just by doing this I'm gonna hit undo what we want to focus on today is using parametric transformation so I'm going to go into parametric transformation window and so our goal is simply to increase the displacement from 49,000 to 55,000 long tons but I want to keep the length beam and depth the same so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to increase the block coefficient I'm going to do a first trial stab at it and specify 0.62 and MaxSurf will come back and you'll see the lines of the vessel change and I'm at 53,600 long tons. So if I want to bump that up closer to what my target is, I'm going to increase this a little bit more to 0.64. But I'm also going to tell MaxSurf that um, I want the LCB to be a little bit more forward than what it's saying at 54.5%. So I'm going to change that to 53 and try hitting search again. And now MaxSurf came back and gave me a displacement of 55,359, which is close enough uh, for what I'm looking for. So I'm going to accept that. And if I rotate this model a little bit, and I can turn the buttock lines on so you can see kind of a before and after by me just hitting undo and redo. So this is the transformed hull. So I can just save that. And next step, we're going to go into resistance. And I've already saved it. So I'm going to close the design. And we're going to go into MaxSurf resistance. So you'll notice this interface is uh, basically the same, uh, which is one of the important points about using MaxSurf is ease of use. So first we're going to open up our baseline hull uh, that we started with and the first step is measuring the hull under water and I can verify that by turning the sections on and I'm given a data table of the key measurement parameters that are consistent with using those various resistance methods. So for example, one of those parameters I'm shifting to the plan view is measuring up in the bow what's called the half angle of entrance. For this baseline vessel, that value is 8 degrees. You can see my prismatic coefficient is 0.58. The other next step is to specify the speed range we want to do. So we're going to go from 1 knot to 20 knots. And we need to select the methods that we're going to use for uh, the resistance. So MaxSurf resistance comes with 
a variety of uh, resistance methods that are based on toe tank testing with regression regression analysis but there's also a slender body analytical method that's provided that can work very well on vessels with a length to beam ratio of at least five you may get results that could be uh, better with four to one but I believe the recommended is five to one so for this we're going to select Holtrup, Compton, Fung and Slender Body and just to see what it comes back and does is after comparing measurements with the parameters of that method if you see these yellow or red uh, warnings that's telling you that that method falls outside of the recommended parameters when it takes these measurements. So what we're going to do is change our methods and we're not going to include those two. We're just going to do Holtrop and Slender Body. So that's ready to go. I, the last step is for me to actually calculate the Slender Body results. And my results are actually in its own results window and here is where I can very quickly take this whole table and I can copy it into an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, these types of tables that MaxSurf utilizes whether for input or for output work just work very much like a Excel spreadsheet. So this is a template that I already had uh, created and I'm just going to paste in the results from that analysis of the baseline vessel and you can see how Excel charted it for me. So the next thing we need are the results from the uh, modified vessel with the larger displacement. So we're finished with this vessel for now. So we will close that and we will open up the 55,000 ton vessel, measure the surfaces. You can see that they're there and calculate the slender body results. So those results are here in this table and I'm going to copy those results, bring them into Excel in the applicable tab. Now I can look at the results of the two vessels and compare them side by side. So what's very powerful here is you saw how I was able to quickly modify the vessel using parametric transformation and bring the two different vessels into max surf resistance and get some good insights into how that impacts the uh, power requirement of the vessel. Now in this case we just plotted uh, effective horsepower and compared the two so you can see how they compare. There isn't that much of a difference at a low speed but as you increase the speed the, uh, the difference an increase in power requirement starts to become much more noticeable. Finally, the last thing I want to show is the ability to look at the wake of the vessel. And we can do that under the analysis menu, just calculate the free surface wave pattern. And MaxSurf actually uses the slender body method to do that. So if, for example, I want to see the wake at 20 knots and I can specify how big of a grid I want to uh, use for doing the calculation. I can vertically exaggerate the waves a little bit to make them easier to visualize. And so that's what MaxSurf does here. So we're actually uh, running that calculation right now. It takes about 60 seconds. So to um, save a little time, I'm going to hit the pause button. So with this, uh, wake surface analysis completed. Now you can see a, a visual plot of what the generated wake looks like and you can see how there's a, a, a the bow wake is starting to generate here as well as the uh, what comes off the stern and 
This can be helpful uh, to visualize how the vessel responds um, and difference in vessels. I can also look at the vessel up underneath, uh, looking up uh, at the surface of the water, and I can turn the slender body mesh on and off for the vessel. So, it's about as much as we have time for today. I wanted to uh, thank you for joining us and encourage you to visit our website, which is charlestonmarineconsulting.com. We've got a lot of uh, details on MacSurf, the various modules. We've also got some very helpful links to uh, a couple of dozen YouTube uh, webinars that are very educational for uh, all kinds of topics from stability, advanced stability, floatable length, and probabilistic damage stability, um, other hydrodynamic capabilities. So thank you for joining us. Have a great day.